Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another preview towards the season as we're focusing in on all the midfielders today. Like I said in the title, all relevant midfielders, it's just a good way for me to uh, try and get to all the players you might be thinking about. So if they're in 3% of sides or more, I'll be talking about them today. But this is a pretty special video for old Shorty. Um, as the title also suggests, 1,000 videos. The thousandth video on the channel. And it was a milestone that DR actually enlightened me as we caught up for a collab the other week. Um, I knew I was around the vicinity, but I didn't actually realize it was so close. So I just wanted to, um, if you didn't mind me being a little bit self-indulgent for the first three or four minutes of this video, just wanted to you know, get a bit of a trip down memory lane. So there you go, 999, this being the thousandth video. So it's pretty crazy if I sort of go, how do we filter this? Um, can you do it from the old, um, oldest to newest or whatever it is, recently uploaded? Oh, you used to be able to go from the bloody very first ones. Well, fuck it, I'm going to just talk and scroll at the same time until we get to my first ever video because I am not a tech wizard. There's probably a quicker way for me to do this, but this is how I'm going to do it. So I just really wanted to... You know, thank you guys for all your support over what has been probably five or six years of content on the channel. And this maybe isn't the worst way to sort of do it, as you can kind of get an idea for all my different haircuts. And I used to do it in the car. I used to just be, you know, I remember some days recording and it'd be 30 degrees, probably 45 in the car. I'd be sweating bullets, but I didn't really have a space inside for me to really do it. This is when I did a, a vlog, just fucking random stuff. And look at these thumbnails. Some of these thumbnails are just rude as anything. Shorty say, I used to do some of the editing is just outrageous stuff. Um, why did I put my league code with me sitting on the beach? That's just kind of weird. Um, a couple of pair-ups with Langers. There's some goal kicking videos through here. But yeah, I really just wanted to thank you guys for your support over the journey. I mean, you guys are the ones that make the channel. And to have a thousand videos was, was kind of cool to just look back on and be like, wow, that's that's sort of cool. I never really set out to, to have that many videos. I remember the first one, which I'll show you guys in a moment, like was just me with my old dictaphone when I used to be a, a journalist and you'd record the interviews um you know i remember just sitting in my room on my floor being bloody nervous being like holy shit am i gonna upload something to youtube jesus what if i stutter and stumble and you know and over the there you go shorty super coach intro look at that just real basic stuff the logos let's have a listen to this This was just recorded on the Welcome on the to floor. the first podcast on Shorty Supercoach. Podcast. I'm Shorty. This is going to be a channel dedicated to Supercoach. And this is basically just a bit of an intro on what it's going to be about. As I said, it's all Supercoach. Some of my philosophies about the game and footy in general, really. Um, you can check out the name and the, the Supercoach about me or any suggestions. How did I sign off? That'd be fantastic. But for now, stay tuned. And uh, as footy season wraps up, we'll get stuck into the preseason very soon. Just wasn't my finest editing, just left three seconds of nothing at the end there. But yeah, crazy scenes, you know. I, I, I did start out as a podcast format because I didn't really want to be on the screen, to be honest. So for a while, I was like, look, look at this trash, <laughs> look at this. How do you win Supercoach? And I'll just add a ring to it with some paint job sort of around it. That is fucking outrageous. Technology's never been my strong suit, but you know... Um, some of the editing cracks me up but yeah again like i'm really proud of the channel and we've taken it from a podcast style to video to screen record to doing live sessions with quizzes um footy tipping leagues releasing league codes and and now like i really do feel like I've got a tight-knit community on here. Like, I have the regulars that always comment. And uh, I feel like I, I, the live sessions have gone a long way to really getting to know you guys. And definitely at the start, um, was a pretty serious operator, pure super coach, um, where now I really try to keep it a bit lighter and have a bit of fun, particularly that first five or whatever minutes of each video. I, I try to more often than not have a story or two or something funny that's happened throughout the week because I think, you know, 
it's like I always say, you come for the super coach and you stay for the stories. And that's kind of what I've um, tried to develop it. Because I'm a pretty laid back, sort of chill guy. Um, and as much as I love taking my super coach serious, you got to have a bit of a laugh in there as well. So, yeah, it was just kind of a cool milestone. Um, and I just wanted to, yeah, sort of share that with you guys and thank you guys for all your support, your comments. Because um, there have been times where I've definitely thought, ah, oh, gee, like, do I keep going? Like, I've never really genuinely thought I would stop, but there are times where you go, oh, gee, takes a bit of work sometimes. I mean, oh, do do many people... Like, sometimes I went through a period of time where I really got a bit too invested in the views and like, ah, oh, no, like, that didn't get enough views. Why was that? Where now I, I really just do it because I enjoy it and I know I've got a core group out there who really enjoy the content and if it gets a few more views, then that's great. Um, but I'm really just doing it for the the super coach community as a as a whole but more so the the shorty super coach community which i think is a really cool one you're a bunch of funny bastards out there i tell you some of the stuff you guys comment and talk about in the live sessions are, are mighty funny um so yeah all those all those good comments and your involvement and when you guys say g'day to me out in the street like that's sort of the stuff that really gives me that passion and drive and motivation and, and reassurance that gee people do actually kind of care if you put a video up from time to time and and they get around it which brings me a lot of joy um so yeah again we are on the eve of the season and we've got big fish to fry as we look at the midfielders but i just wanted to take a little bit of a moment there to um just yeah appreciate the little milestone and in turn appreciate you guys who who make the channel what it is so um yeah thank you thank you that's enough that's shorty's uh ted talk and uh anniversary speech over with um we're gonna dive into the midfield and, and like i said this type of video can be long sometimes and i time stamp them so it does hopefully make it a bit easier for you to sift through but the idea is for me that i can't get to every player that you might be thinking about throughout my other videos so i just try and give sometimes a 10 to 15 second thought on this player and sometimes it might be a couple of minutes depending on them but if they're in three percent of teams it means someone out there or a reasonable amount of people are thinking about them and i'll give a bit of input so um yeah so enjoy this little ride in the midfield it's a place that we just can't go wrong you've got to nail those premiums and there are a few mid prices as well that i want to talk about so let's get stuck into it now shall we I am playing golf this afternoon too, so this the second half of this video might be recorded in the evening or potentially on Monday, but uh, got to love those long weekend vibes. I'm looking forward to it, but um, for now, we'll bust out a few midfielders, some of the premiums that, like I said before, you can't get them wrong. You don't want to be missing out on the guns or trading a premium that just hasn't quite delivered. So Rory Laird, he's in 25% of sides, and a lot of these guys at the top I can sort of sift through because you don't need to be convinced on these guys. Laird is a ball magnet. If anything, he's maybe a touch overpriced. Like, I'm not sure he can reach those heights again, but an average of 120 plus I see very likely, and you're going to get what you pay for. Um, and a lot of you out there are believing in Rory Laird and every right to. Oliver's one of the most popular players in the game. He's in my team. He's a gun, um, midfield jet, inside beast, some of the best hands in the business. One of the worst haircuts in the business too, but is a superstar for Supercoach. <clears throat> and interestingly, Lockie Neal is a little bit down on the popularity. I feel like you've got to have one or two of these big dogs, the big four, the 120-plus guys who are Miller, Neal, Oliver, and... Laird, McRae's been in that group as well at times, but Neil at just 19%, maybe it's the Dunkley factor, or maybe it's just, I don't know what it is, but he's just slightly um, down on ownership compared to some, but still a superstar, going to get a great player, and maybe a slight more of a pod than previous years. Took Miller, I think the 10% is because of this interrupted preseason. I'd be happy to steer clear just because whenever a player does have a bit of an interrupted preseason, it makes me a little nervous and you'd, you'd hate to pick a guy who's just not hitting round one at 100%. He may well come out and average 115, 120 for the whole year and start like a house on fire. But I guess when you're spending 662k, you don't want any smidgen of doubt because if you get it wrong, you'll be kicking yourself because it's been well 
forecast that he has had that injury. So um, happy to pass on Miller, and, and you just hope that maybe he just chucks in the odd 70 or 80 at the start of the year, and we can maybe pick him up by around 6, 7 or 8 at a bit of a better price. Keller Mills continues to be a great pod in my opinion. I know sometimes he plays behind the footy and that makes a few people nervous because when he's a midfielder, he's just a tackling machine, just gets involved. He's just such a smart footballer. But because he is such a smart footballer, sometimes they do throw him to half back and he can be a bit of a Mr. Fix-It. Not always great for Supercoach, very good for Sydney. Maybe that's why a few people have scrolled past him, but... I oh, mean, if you got him, I think he's a great pod. He's one of my favourites. I don't know if he's got the ability to take that average too much further. So maybe people feel like, gee, I'm getting him at his absolute top end. Maybe that's why. But I think he scored a 200 either the year before last or last year. So this bloke's got a serious ceiling and is one of the best mids in the game. Marcus bonson Pally, 32% of sides. He's been the flavour of the month. And he's in my team. Hasn't been all of the preseason but I found him just irresistible. Cov at tennis told me about a week or two ago, mate, he's my Brownlow pick, and then he came out and absolutely dominated on the weekend as well, and I thought, gee, could be onto something here, mate. And I think the fact that not only has Bonton Pally for the last three, four years been a lock to average between 115 and 119, but the Dogs are now finally got those key forwards. They've got a really tall forward line. So there'll be no need for Bonton Pally to just occasionally spend time forward. Or maybe they just try him as centre half forward for 10, 15 minutes here and there. He's an inside mid. He can still kick goals from the midfield. This could be the year that he goes 120 plus, And I think you've got to be on him. McRae could also offer a bit of value. Look, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't talk you out of it if you had McRae and Bonton Pally in your team. He is... Um, Part of a midfield that he sometimes isn't at the top end of centre bounces, but with Dunkley going, it will allow him to hopefully get in that centre bounce a bit more because he's a 120-plus averager when he's in the centre more often than not, sort of when it's 60% and above. When it gets below that and he gets on your wings and that type of thing, he's too good of a player to not find the footy, but he goes from averaging you know, 123 to, to 115. So it's still great numbers but could be the difference. So if you think the departure of Dunkley could really get him back to 120+, plus, there might be a smidgen of 50 or 60K value in that. Christian Petrarca is in 9% of teams and a player that is almost regarded as one of the best in the game, but it's never quite translated to being the best super coach option in the game. He does have a tendency to turn the footy over at times, not always as careful with it as some. But he's a beautiful watch. He's a great footballer. Not for me, and proving not for everyone as well because he's slightly more unique than some. But if you went with him as well, he is a bloke who can tear the game apart. We've seen that in some of the biggest games over the years, but he just hasn't been a guy that I've even thought about um, this year. Zach Merritt, the skipper now, absolute ball magnet. And I think he's a lock to just sort of be around 108 to 114 kind of average. I think he's as consistent as ever. A really nice ball user, lovely left boot. Again, I just think he's probably on that slightly more expensive side. There's not much meat on the bone in terms of how much more we can get out of him. But as consistent as ever. Doesn't love a tag, but it seems like Parrish probably gets tagged more than him. So I think it will just continue to be 110 sort of average thereabouts, um, but just not a guy that I've gone with. Andy Brayshaw is definitely a fella that I've strongly considered and was in my team even a week or so ago. I have since moved him for Bonson Pally. The only thing, I, I love Brayshaw. I think he'll take his game again to another level, and he has done this for a while. So I've been a Brayshaw fan for some time. Um, just... As honest as the day is long, he tackles, he, he wins plenty of the footy. Now, quick question. What do you reckon, uh, let's just let's look at his stats. Now, averaged 29 touches last year. What do you reckon his com- contested possession count would be of those 29? I would have been thinking 11 or 12, you know, like maybe 13. Like a pretty, pretty good contested number I feel like it's way less than I always think so it's nine you know I just always thought that I don't know about you but I always think Brayshaw in and under you know but 
he's actually not as in and under as it seems. It's it's really weird. Like he's not a bull like I kind of thought he was going to be. But I was on him when he went from seventy to one hundred and one. Got a feeling he was available as a forward then or something. It was really weird. And then he's just been steady. 101 to 107, 107 to basically 112. And again, I think he can do similar. I think he can take that 112 to 114, 115. If he has a career bester, he could be even a bit more. But I just opted for Bontempelli because I think there's even more scope for growth and, and potential brown lows. Brayshaw, the only knock on him might be that while he is steady and honest as the day is long, can he absolutely hurt you? Can he hit the scoreboard? Can he take that average 115 plus? Some people might doubt it, um, but definitely seems popular. 18% of sides, quality player. So if he's in your team, certainly wouldn't talk, it yet, talk you out of it because I love him, but I have opted for Bontempelli in that M2 position at this point in time. Okay, we are back. This is a video done over a couple of days, like I think I mentioned before in the video. Probably wasn't going to finish this one in the one sitting, so public holiday Monday. We're, uh, we're a little tired. We uh, got a couple of drinks into us last night, so Shorty's just taking it pretty easy, but wanted to finish this one off for you. Also, while I've got you, I'll be going live um, tomorrow night, so Tuesday, um, from 7 o'clock, so getting those live Q&As back in business. So yeah, we'd love to have you along and um, be good to really dissect it because we're not far off now, a few days out, um, which is really the business end of it. We've really got to start making some absolute decisions with our team. Um, working through, like I said, just did Brayshaw. Paddy Cripps, 12% of teams. Um, he was all the rage last year, sort of returning to his best and there was a lot of hope that he would and he did really, you know, a pretty good average. I probably thought even though... Um, he did get injured in one game, so it was kind of an injury-affected average. Really good season from Paddy, obviously. Took out the brown low, so it was amazing stuff. But I'm happy to just um, pick around him. I, I feel like he is a guy that um, is a superstar of our game, wins so much inside footy, but isn't always an absolute lock for our teams for whatever reason. If you like Paddy, you can go with him. Fair enough. I'm not going to um, rail against that at all. But no, he's just not in my team this year. I just don't quite see the value. Um, and I just think there might be some better options out there as well. So as you can see, I've sort of got... You've got Tom Green. You've got Jack Steele with a bit more value, I think, an out-average crip. So it's not to knock Paddy. It's just to say maybe there are some other options I prefer. And there is that man, Jack Steele. Look, I think he's a really um, great option this year. The price tag of 604 is a fair bit under what we've seen him in previously because we did see him go 120 plus on a number of seasons and you know he does that off the back of so many tackles so much contested possession and i don't really see that changing i mean we saw him have big center bounce numbers in the preseason even though it wasn't an amazing game for him he didn't find a stack of the footy but gee if he could return to these sort of numbers that would be mighty tasty even anything around 115 would be great but He's the sort of guy that has that type of ceiling because he can just have your high 20s touches, 15 of those contested, and literally 10 tackles. So he can get those 150s pretty easy. He's been in my team whole preseason, and he hasn't moved, and he won't be moving. So I thought he would probably be a bit more popular than just the 13%. So hopefully he's like a kind of a pod, not quite a pod, but just a, a little bit of um, slight point of difference for Shorty. We'll talk about Dunkley in the forward line. I think Josh Kelly, 6% of teams, has come into a bit of a conversation off some really good footy through the um, preseason. And, and look, he was a guy that sometimes got pushed out to a wing or a flank or just outside the stoppage because the Giants had so many inside mids. We've seen Taranto and Hopper now go. I think particularly Taranto leaving, we'll see um, Josh Kelly get more inside mid time and look I, I don't mind it I mean six percent of teams it's it's not the worst I mean I've had him in my side over the years he hasn't always been a guy that I've had great super coach experiences with but he's got some amazing ability to go 110 plus didn't see it last year and I think the last couple of years really he's been a little bit down but if you're a believer that his role can just slightly increase for your inside mid time, then it's hard to argue because his skills and ability to hurt teams on the outside is amazing. 
So definitely if he can just get back to inside mid style stuff, he could be a very handy option. Again, we're just a smidgen of value. Don't mind it at all. Um, Tom Libertore, I said if they were in 3% of teams, I'd talk about him, but I don't see any need to pick Libba. He's so consistent, so good, and, and such an inside beast as well. But no real need for super coach. I just don't see him taking that average to 110, and he just doesn't offer us anything in the um, way of super coach selection. But he's a great player for the dogs. Um, and this is when we start to sort of sift through because we're kind of getting to those awkward priced guys where they're good, but they probably can't take their game right up to the super premium levels. Um, Cornelio we'll talk about in the forward line. Luke Davies, Uniac, that back end of the season last year was huge, wasn't it? And I think the 4% of coaches who have him will be thinking that he can just continue that on over. And I wouldn't um, argue against it either. I just think those type of selections take a little bit more guts. You know, you, you're really looking for him to take his game to the absolute next level for a whole year and look at, at 557 he does offer a little bit of value if you think he can be 110 112 for the whole season which he really was that back half of the season was just exploding out of packs kicking goals he looks so powerful he really came of age so definitely i think he could do that for the whole year i'm just preferring to go with a bit more of a known quantity with some other players and i think ldu obviously is sort of unknown we all expect him to get to that 110 level at some stage but whether it will be this year and for the whole year we'll wait and see but there's a few of you coaches out there going with him i'm not one of them but um bailey smith four percent of teams again i just don't know if he is a guy that super coach scoring system suits beautifully for whatever reason he seems to be that afl fantasy type of player Turns the ball over maybe a little bit more than some. But again, he's a player on the rise. He is in a bit of an awkward zone. You know, average 98 last year. If you're picking him at that price, you really do need him to be a guy that you keep all year. Therefore, he's probably got to lift that average by at least 10 points. And I don't see that happening. Of course, Dunkley going will give him a bit more opportunity because he probably did get pushed to the fringes and the flanks at times. But um, I'm happy to um, leave Bailey there and uh, scroll past him. But a few of you out there are big fans and picking him. So he could provide a bit of a point of difference. But I just don't think he's ready to go bang to that absolute top end 110 sort of points. Um, blitz halves we can talk about in the ruck department. And Tom Green, as you can see, he's in my side. He's in a lot of his sides out there. And a bit like LDU, he's a guy that we need to see take his game to the next level and a few of the things that I've said about those past couple of guys might be, sound a bit contradictive now because I'm sort of saying, well, Tom Green, he'll just take his game to the next level. Stuff what I said just before, he will do it. And I guess it just comes out, uh, comes down to how you um, value these players and what you believe they can do. 97 average last year. All signs point to Tommy Green just going 110. And that might seem outrageous to some, but I think he is sort of that flavor. He's a guy we've, really liked for a number of years now and one of those super coach players that we've sort of touted and and uh earmarked that would one day be a keeper and absolute premium for our teams and a lot of us out there are thinking it this will be the year i think the departure of hopper and taranto like we mentioned before will help josh kelly like i mentioned but i think the main guy it will help is tom green getting that inside mid sort of stuff he showed what he could do last year i think he had a 160 early in the year and he can be such a dynamic inside mid, a bit of Clayton Oliver kind of vibes, and he's really bulked up. If he doesn't take his game to that 110, then oh, I just don't have a clue really. But I think everything that we can judge a player on taking that big next step, which is probably probably the toughest step to take in the game, you can become a good player, but it's really becoming one of the best in the comp, and for Tom Green becoming one of the best inside mids in the comp. So he tackles hard does all the inside work and the grunt work that we love in Supercoach. So I'm on board Tommy Green, have been all pre-season, hoping he can really stamp himself on the competition this year and become a keeper. We continue to sort of see these next wave of gun midfielders coming through and Chad Warner is another one of those. So you look at Bailey Smith, Luke Davis, Uniac, Tom Green and Chad Warner, they all have that potential to be 110 guys. I guess... It's really just about picking the one that you think can do it. Most of us are on Tom Green, but Chad Warner's outstanding player. And 
geez, grand final was good. His year was fantastic. I mean, he is a goal-kicking mid who still has development to go. I reckon like he can still put on a couple of kilos on that frame and just continue to win a bit more inside ball. But his link-up, his work rate, yeah, just that confidence. He just looks like a player who really believes he belongs now. And you could see that coming through in his game last year. So there's no reason to see it won't continue through. But like I said, you, I feel like most of us are, are probably just leaning towards Tom Green. But... Chad Warner also has a lot of qualities that make him potentially one of the most damaging mids in the comp. I mean, he probably already is, but I guess we're talking about pure numbers here. And his super coach numbers haven't quite translated to one of the best in the game yet. But that graph is trending upwards. So I'm um, certainly not trying to knock any of these guys that I'm not picking, but it's just sometimes you, you, you go to another player in that similar price bracket. You can't have them all, but Warner like a lot of these next-gen mids, has a hell of a lot of potential and is definitely trending upwards. But as we can talk about the forward line, Tom Mitchell, 12% of teams, and he's probably been one that I've just scratched my head over for many a week. He was in my team. I was big on him. He's now out of my team. and I don't know. Price point, really, really good for a bloke who's been one of the best super coach players over the journey. I mean, he has had some ripping stuff over the years. And been really, really kind to us. He's got that pig ability to just win plenty of inside ball and just dish it out. And, and look at those numbers, particularly 2017 to 2021. was just huge. Of course, he missed a year in between. My only worry now, my only worry now is that he, he handballs a lot, which he always has done. But he was always a guy who needed 35-odd touches to really hurt you and really get that score over the line. And if we just look at the numbers... I mean, 2017, 28, 35 touches, 2021, 34. And just dropped down to 28 last year. And that saw him average mid-90s. And I'm just a little bit concerned because he will get a better role at the Pies. But I'm just a bit concerned that maybe he is just your 25 to 30 touches guy. And he's going to average between 98 and 103 kind of thing. Which is okay, but not really what we want. You'd rather pay a little bit extra for a Tom Green or something like that and then believe that he could maybe take it to 110. I just sort of worry that Tom Mitchell is in the latter stages of his career, still doing great things, still going to play a really good role, but the Pies run a lot of players through there and they've openly admitted it. You know, you've got Crisp, you've got Pendles, um, you'll have Dugowie in there, you'll have Crisp in there, you'll have Dacos in there at times, uh, and there'll be others that I miss, Taylor Adams. So there's quite a few. Um, I'm just I'm just concerned that he has those eight kicks, twenty handballs, and scores 106. Like it, it's okay, but I just don't know if he's still got that ceiling where he racks up 41 touches like he used to. That's my only query on him, and that's the one thing I just thought he is in the latter stage of his career. I'm just gonna lend myself to maybe someone whose graph is trending upwards, like a Tom Green. As opposed to Tommy Mitchell, who could still be good, but let's face it, he has had the best part of his career already. So maybe, maybe the best footy is behind him. We'll just see. I'm surprised. Um, oh, Rosie will talk about in the forward line as well, as we will do Taranto, but very popular players, and rightfully so. Joe Simkin, bloke who burnt me many years ago. Brutal stuff. Um, Bolton and Martin will touch on in the forward line. McGrath we spoke about in the back line. Jolly Newcomb's in 4% of teams. And, oh, it's just no man's land, I think. 478. Ah, gee, I don't know. I mean, he, yeah, he probably takes his average into the 90s, becomes almost Hawthorne's main guy in there. But, I don't know. I, I just don't really feel like there's much purpose in that selection. There's not really value in his price and he's not really going to in my opinion take his average all the way up to 105 or something like that so even if he does improve he's probably going to make you 70k 90k and you eventually trade him out anyway so i would much prefer to go someone if in that mid price range that is cheaper because really we look at mid prices kind of 250 to 450 and he's more expensive than that. So he's absolute top-end mid-price. And he's not going to be a guy you keep for your whole year. So I don't really see the point in that selection. But some of you do. 
He's a bit of a fan favourite, John Newcomb. There's Golden, he's burst on the scene, but we'll touch on him in the forward line. Um, Dugowie is a bit of a flavour of the month, isn't he? 6% of teams, definitely people jumped on board after a really good pre-season, but couldn't trust this bloke as, well, as far as we could fry him, could we? Oh, gee, I've butchered that sentence. <laughs> you couldn't trust him as far as you could throw him. I mean, he has let us down time and time again. We think he's going to play mid. He does for a bit. Then he plays key forward, and they throw him around. Then he gets suspended, or he pings some sort of injury. Oh, I'm just happy to go right past to go. <laughs> I don't know if there's any real need. If he was forward, absolutely consider for sure. But I don't know. He could come out and have a great year, no doubt. But absolutely more than happy to just keep scrolling past to go. I think most of you are probably on the same wavelength there. And Dangerfield, he's in 3% of teams, probably one of his lowest ownerships for a long time. He's at a really nice price for what he can do, but a bit like Tom Mitchell. I think his best days are definitely past him. Geelong do put quite a few through uh, far out. I am struggling to speak today, ladies and gentlemen. The Cats put a few players through that midfield rotation, and we will see Paddy definitely spend a little bit more time forward. Not much, because he is a pure mid, but... We did see in the practice game that instead of going off, he would rest forward. and So I still see him averaging around 100. Last year was very interrupted, and we saw him almost be best on ground in the granny, and he was best on in the prelim. So still can play amazing footy. I just think he's at that stage in his career where it's not so much about what he can do numbers-wise and scoring-wise. It's probably about managing him as a player. You know, I don't know if he'll play every year, um, every game. (laughs) Someone, someone let me have a nap. Oh boy, get me some Nurofen shorty struggle. But um, anyway, don't pick, don't pick Patty. No need. Great play. He's been so good to us over the journey, but not this year. And um, even Dacos in three percent seems ah, oh, no, no need for that. No need for Josh Dacos. Just doesn't happen. He might average ninety if he's at his absolute best, but no, it's just no real point in that selection. Cunnington, I'll be really interested to talk about in the forward line. Currently in my team, but he's, yeah, really interesting talking point, I reckon. <clears throat> um, even Lockie Hunter's in 3% of teams, but oh, oh, dumb. Just dumb. You know, good preseason game, but no. No need, guys. Get away from it. Um, and I think we'll be coming up to old mate... Hopper soon, I think. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Did I miss anyone? Horn Francis, of course, will do in the forward line. Um, Jacob Hopper's just one of the most obvious selections, I think. Some people have, you know, lost a little bit of faith, I heard, after a preseason game that didn't light the world on fire, but he's a lock for my team. I think he's averaged 90 plus, he's averaged 95 before. At that price, it's just simple. Like, he's going to play Thursday night. It's going to be inside mid. He's finally going to get that role that he's wanted to for ages. At times, he had at the Giants, but fell out of favour last year with injury and that type of thing. Fresh scene. Him and Taranto, I just think, are going to do really, really good things, and I think they should both be in your team. Um, definitely Hopper probably won't be in your side for the whole year, but, hey, he'll average somewhere in the 90s, make us a lot of cash, and eventually be a nice little trade for one of the top-end super premiums in the midfield. So I think it's a pretty easy selection, that one. Bit surprised that Dom Sheed is in 6% of teams. I mean, I, I don't really understand why you would go with Sheed when you've got Hopper right above him there. Maybe some people are going both. I mean, he can definitely score when he's at his best, but, I mean, he had one year averaging 95. 2020 was also pretty good. It's been a while since we've seen his best footy. And now you have to question, had a you know an age of 28, basically. So, you, okay, he's not old or anything, but last year with the body, you've got to be concerned. I just much prefer Hopper. I mean, just, they're basic. They are the same price, dead same price. There you go. Um, yeah, I just think you're far better off going for Hopper or even Warple, who I'll talk about in a second. But, yeah, just haven't really um, got around Sheed. Just don't think there's... Um, too much of a need. So there's Bruin that we'll talk about in Fife. We'll talk about in the forward line. James Warple, 
I think he'll get back to his best. And there have been times where he's been in my team. You've probably seen me chop and change, and I have done again today. Oh, man, it's getting stressful. But he's a fella that I think will be, like I mentioned, with Newcomb. Number one and two mids at Hawthorne, really. Inside Bulls. Yeah, Warple definitely isn't the nicest ball user at times and can get a bit hacking on the boot style, but he does win a lot of the inside footy and he has done it before, which is always nice to see. So we've seen him average good numbers before. And I think sometimes that's just what helps us um, sleep easy at night too. When a bloke's done it before, you know, you, you're not so much trying to create something out of nothing. You're like, hang on a sec, he looks good and I know he can do it. You know, I mean, he looked good in the preseason game and he's averaged 97 before. He's fallen out of favour because of um, Mitchell and O'Meara. They're gone now. So I think Warple will return to an average in the 90s. And he's going to make you some cash. So it really just depends how you want to structure up your team. Because he's going to make you some money. So um, I think um, if you were looking at Hopper, Warple and Sheed, I'd clearly rank it Hopper, then Warple, then Sheed. But they'll all make money just weighing up the pros and cons. And, you know, it's just... Uh, just want to take some times, and he's in 1% of teams, but this bloke, I've banged on him for a while. He's not in my team right now because I'm just giving my side a bit of a different look. But Nasiah Wanganin Malira, just remember five weeks in when he's averaging 93 off the halfback flank, hitting targets left, right, and center, and he's the talk of the town. Just remember Shorty told you. Remember he told you about him. Get him in your draft team if he's still available or a free agent, but... I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick him because it's such a risk in Classic. And it just made more sense to have that money spent in my forward line. I don't know, because I can field Phillips and McKenzie and Ashcroft. There's you know, so many rookies that I think could score well in the midfield. So it didn't make sense to sort of have Warple and Wangadi Malira, which I've had at times. But anyway, just remember, if he's dominating, remember where you heard it first. <coughs> oh, Jesus. Tell you what, I've been smashing the waters today. Absolutely necessary. Drive down to Torquay to get that sanger, that chicken stencil sandwich that I've been waiting for for ages. So that was beautiful. That was great. Well, we might nearly be done this video too. There might not be too many more because Flanders will talk about the forward line. We'll um, we'll probably yeah we'll finish with Callahan I think. He might, and then we sort of get into the rookies. So, yeah, Finn Callahan. I mean, he's in 19% of sides, and I um, don't mind it at all. He's a really classy player. I think he probably will be pushed out to more of a wing by the looks of it. That's the only thing that worries me. Definitely a high prospect, you know, high draft pick, very talented guy. Just worries me a bit. The Giants still bat pretty deep, you know, in that midfield, and whether he breaks into it immediately or has to spend a bit of time on the wing which it looked like he did in that Pracky game. Kicked a couple of nice goals, though, so we still find a way. He's very talented, but um, I probably only think with Callahan is I think you're almost better shopping a little bit cheaper with like an Ashcroft or a McKenzie or a Will Phillips, a few blokes I mentioned before. So he's almost probably going to produce similar, maybe even less than some of those guys because those other blokes are probably going to get some genuine center bounce time. Where at this stage, Callahan probably looks to be a little bit more on the outside. So you might almost be better off saving 50, 60, 70k, maybe even more, um, and downgrading to like a rookie who could get some genuine midfield minutes. But super talent, there's no doubt about it, will make you money. And I can see why he's in 20% of teams. So that is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. That was a, that was a big video over a couple of days, and I'll um, just get editing this one, and it'll probably be up uh, probably 5, 6 o'clock, public holiday. Got to love that, and um, got to love 316 on the couch tonight too. That combination is just fantastic. Very much looking forward to watching that. So, yeah, like I said, um, I've got a uh, live session coming up tomorrow. Also got Shorty Supercoach group, so I've been trying to put it into the comments and the description as often as I can. So if you can't see it in this one, It'll definitely be in another recent video. Um, also, footy tipping as well. There should be a link um, for the footy tips there too if you want to have a bit of a tipping dabble with me. But um, yeah, I'm going to just uh, kick back, chill out for the rest of the afternoon, do a bit of uh, editing and uh, maybe chuck a little TikTok up on Shorty Supercoach and um, call it a day. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your support. We're nearly there. The preseason is nearly done. Some decisions are about to be made. So I'm looking forward to it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.